she was very open about what it was like to grow up as your daughter and sort of when she how she slowly became aware of what you did for a living and how she could tell, you know, obviously she's fiery and feisty, but how she could sort of tell that you were an important man, you know, the way people greeted you, the way people showed you respect. And I know, you know, that must have manifested in your life too, you, sort of getting into the, the clubs in New York. And I saw the ABC documentary where, it, you know, you talked about you looked at the Manhattan skyline and said, you know, I own this. I own it. I built it. I control it. So can you talk to us a little bit about that, that piece of your history? Yeah, well, you know, I, I became very powerful in the construction industry. And one day we were on the other side in, in Connecticut, I believe it is. And we were in a fancy hotel and we went out, I went out on the patio and, uh, smoking a cigar, I think. And I looked at the skyline at night. Manhattan is gorgeous, lit up at night. And it just, the guy who was with me said, what are you looking at? I said, look at this. Look at the beauty here. It's, it's, it's absolutely stunning. It's gorgeous. And uh, I'm part of building this whole thing. I mean, you can't get a job at this point in my life without some sort of a wink and a nod from me saying yes or no. I mean, I became very powerful in the construction industry. Paul had me, Paul Castellano had me under his wing because he loved construction. And um, he was part of the reason I became very powerful in the construction industry. And uh, he enjoyed using me to run certain unit unions and do certain things for him. And um, yeah, I, I, I loved the, uh, what I was doing as far as the construction and the I should, I should mention, cause you mentioned Paul Castellano. So, cause you had sort of started with a different crime family and then eventually moved over to the Gambino crime family. And that's the family that Paul Castellano for a time was the head of, and you would later become part of his assassination. Um, yes. but before, before, before we get to that, um, so you're living large, you're living large in, in New York. And this was a time I mean, what is a weird question, but like, to what extent did that film, the Godfather, affect people's view of the mafia and your own experience within the mafia, you know, cause it, when I was growing up, you knew about the mafia, but there, there definitely was a glorification around it. You know, it seemed like, Oh, they hurt people, but maybe mostly their own people. Well, that's not really true. I mean, they, the extortion was on regular folks too. Um, and yet they seem kind of cool and people wanted to like rub elbows with them in very high circles. There was speculation about Frank Sinatra and, you know, so on and so forth. So, what was your experience of that movie and people's reaction to the mob? Well, that movie stunned me. It, it was probably one of the best movies I ever watched. Uh, it was completely well done. Uh, Godfather one and Godfather two, Godfather three was a joke, but yeah. Cause you were in it two, when this was coming out. You were, you were in it when those movies hit. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it showed the family, orientation how we are with family the weddings our fam my family had weddings like that and people would get up and sing and it was fun and uh you know uh who was it sonny is with one of the bridesmaids in a in a, in a room upstairs i mean that's typical of us that was really typical of us all that stuff that happened in that uh the the, the agents watching us and it just gave me a whole different look at the mob and how the people would look at it. And as far as the fascination, I know what it is. Everybody in my mind anyway uh, has a fascination, especially men have a fascination of being a tough guy, uh, going with beautiful women, uh, beautiful cars, making money, you know, fuck the government. I don't want to pay taxes and I don't want to do this and that and the other thing. So, everybody looked at it and it's you didn't live that life, but you admired it in a way you felt mm -hmm. a certain way when you watched it. And I watched this new movie that came out, the offer, how they made the Godfather. Very interesting movie. Great movie um, with the producers in Hollywood, the whole nine yards. I mean, just watching these things, the mafia really, you know, it's when I was in prison a couple of times, AB's, Aryan brothers and other gang members came to me and tell, told me, Sammy, tell me about 
the structure of the mafia. And I would tell them why. You're not the mafia. You're, you're Aryan brothers. Why would you want to know? And they said, your structure lasted a thousand years. People admire you guys. People want, some people wanted to be like you guys. So what's the whole structure about? So I, I realized then, even them asking me questions like that, that they admired themselves and wanted to be like it. My answer to them was, we're not savages. We don't kill outside our, our organization. Where Everybody in the mafia at one time or another has been involved in a murder, 99%. So how do you control that group of people? If there's no violence within us, if there's no punishments that could cause death, how do you stop them? How do you stop a guy? What are you going to do? Cut off his tie? What do you uh, slap him on the wrist? He's not going to listen to you. Then he'll do whatever he wants to do. I, then there'll be no control. We'll be no better than a gang. And that's what I would tell some AB guys and stuff like that. You have to have rules. You have to have ideas. You know, I looked at, there was a conversation I just had recently about, I was in Paul Castellano's house and the union, which we control the association and the union for the garbage. And there was a massive strike. It was on television. There was garbage piled up everywhere. I came in and I, he told me to sit down. The maid uh, got me a cup of coffee and he said, send for Jimmy Brown and the people who are running the union and the association. So we sat there for a while, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Those guys came in. Jimmy Brown was a captain. The other guy was a maid guy. And he said, Look at this television. He said, what are we, animals? Pick up that garbage from schools, from hospitals, from old age homes. We'll win the strike. But what are we, animals? Over money? Over winning? We'll win. Pick up that goddamn garbage. And it struck me in a way that here's the boss of bosses, Paul Castellano. He was the boss of bosses. He was the head of the commission. Saying something like that, caring about children, hospitals, old age homes, that they would be infected with garbage or whatever. Mm. It, it, it just gave me a different look at things. And I, you know, those are good things that I saw. There's evil things I saw. There's people who borderline got to like killing and became serial killers like a Roy DeMeo or Gas Pipe and people like that. And we killed them because they became that. So we don't believe in pedophiles, rapists, serial killers. We want to get rid of that. When I was in my neighborhood, I, you know, the whole neighborhood, I would say, this is my neighborhood. People I don't even know. Maybe you lived in there. I didn't even know you. You're a beautiful woman. You'd walk down the block. My guys, I would tell them, this is not a construction site. Don't hoot now. Don't do anything when you see her. She's part of our, our community. They're us. Nobody's going to touch her. Her husband knew she was beautiful. He'll tell her, go right past Sammy's Club. Don't worry about it. He said that because he knew she was safe. We wouldn't let nothing happen to her. Around the block, only God knows what happens. So we, we lived a different way. And I think that touched the public in a certain way. They, 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 they didn't agree with the violence, but we were different. We were a different type of an organization, criminal organization. I'll call it criminal because it is. Mm -hmm. Summer is officially here. And what better time is there to whip out the barbecue and grill up some steaks? Good Ranchers is the place to get American beef, chicken, and seafood. They sell 100% American meat, and they ship it straight to your door. And right now, Good Ranchers is ready to send you two free prime ribeye steaks with every order that uses my code MEGAN. Other places would charge you well over 50, even 60 bucks a steak to get ribeyes like these, but Good Ranchers is giving them to you for free when you go to goodranchers.com slash MEGAN. This is not the time to wait. Claim your ribeyes today before they run out. 
Yes, this is a limited stock item, first come, first serve, and you want to be first when it comes to Good Ranchers. They deliver the best of American farms and ranches to your door. Make sure you take time today. Right now, go to GoodRanchers.com slash Megan or use my code M-E-G-Y-N at checkout to get your two free 18-ounce ribeyes. Start the summer off right with Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.